Now, defense technology and federal laboratories are one, offering less lethal solutions for the situations you will face. Our technologies have been combined, our products have been improved, shelf lives have been extended, and warranties have been strengthened. Combining our rich resources and extensive research and development efforts, Defense Technology Federal Laboratories will continue to set the standard for others to match. Defense Technology Federal Laboratories, united, will be an even stronger ally for the forces of law and order. Our duty aerosol products offer a complete line of aerosol projectors for duty issue or specialized assignment. It includes OC, chemical or blended formulations in your choice of stream, fog or foam delivery systems. The first response solutions include these less lethal single target options designed for a range of effects from pain compliance to maximum delivered energy that incapacitates or disorients aggressive, violent or armed subjects. They are increasingly viable options for the first response of patrol, mobile field force grenadiers or tactical teams. The crowd management option consists of a wide range of less lethal products including high volume aerosol projectors, chemical devices, and specialty impact munitions that offer four options for the control of civil and correctional disorder. We're ready to serve you in keeping the peace, in restoring law and order anywhere in the world. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. The Secret Service and the FBI have both opened communication centers in Minneapolis to get ready for any security threats at the Republican National Convention. In the event of a crisis, this would be fully staffed. This would be, again, the center of the universe uh, for crisis management. Inside, officers can watch live cameras and satellite images to quickly react to an incident. There's one particular anar anarchist group that has a website and they've been very uh, public about uh, disrupting the RNC. Police dismiss reports that they're planning a sweep this weekend to put protesters behind bars before the convention begins. Uh, what stands out for me is the disproportionate use of force for what um, the police were facing. Um, we really feel that it's been um, a, quite a, a forceful crackdown. It started on Friday evening with the first raid on the activist um, gathering space, continued with house raids on Saturday. There were um, four of them all together. And then, um, you know, piece, people were on pins and needles all weekend. There were snatch and grabs off of streets of, of activists. Police, let me see your hands. Put them on top of your head, please. On top of your head, please. On top of your head, please. You know, you know what, police, uh, ma'am, we're just clear. Uh, are you going to listen to me? We're just notifying you about that. Guys, you go to my backyard. They're handcuffed back here if you want. No, no, no. You see, if they arrested us, they'd have to swear out a complaint against us, and there's nothing that they can prove. They've been detaining people for days around here, and they photograph them, they, they look through your materials, they copy your materials, and don't return them to you. 
and then you're merely detained. So you don't have the same situation where you have a police officer swearing out an affidavit, which we could prove was false. This seems to be a new technique. It sort of looks softer because maybe we'll, maybe they will release us. But even so, we've been pretended, protect, uh, prevented from working here for hours today. Uh, we are, we don't really know who's in charge. How are we going to put blame on this? And actually, if you file a lawsuit, they'll say, "Well, you were just held for a little while. It's sort of no big deal." This isn't because the St. Paul police decided they should go do something, or maybe even at the Ramsey County yesterday at the Convergence Center. It, this is something coming from elsewhere. <clears throat> it's very coordinated. It's very studied. It's very orderly. And it's... Uh, it's Kafka-esque. Demonstrations at the Republican National Convention began early Monday morning as a formation of 60 Iraq and Afghanistan veterans marched from the Minnesota State Capitol to the Excel Center to deliver a briefing on veterans' issues to Senator McCain. Mattis Sharu, who earlier this year refused to deploy to Iraq, explained the reasons for the march. Today, Iraq Veterans Against the War is marching on the Republican National Convention to apply pressure to the McCain campaign to include veterans' issues in their election platform. While John McCain is a veteran, he has a history of not supporting the troops as he should. Uh, for example, voting or refusing to vote for expanding our educational benefits and also making public his intention to keep us in this unlawful occupation of Iraq for a hundred years if necessary. Iraq Veterans Against the War, or IVAW, has three demands. The immediate withdrawal of all occupying forces in Iraq, reparations for the people of Iraq, and full benefits including adequate health care for returning service men and women. Many veterans behind me today. Many of them have decided to even risk arrest to deliver this proposal to John McCain and to bring these important critical issues to the forefront. We hope that the world is watching. We hope that America is watching. The returning war veterans continue to sacrifice and serve their country. Present! Hold! Former Abu Ghraib prison guard Benjamin Thompson shared his story with Democracy Now! One of my prisoners at Abu Ghraib, a place where you saw those photographs come out. You didn't know the half of it. Most of our people didn't live in those cell blocks. Most of them people lived outdoors. And they're killed by enemy insurgents in our camps. This prisoner, this means God hopes for peace. We had 10-year-old boys in my camps. We had an 80-year-old blind man in my camp. They were killed by enemy fire because we did not protect them when they were in our custody. They were not worth protecting. The generals that came to my base came with three helicopters apiece. And when they left, they took them with them. We were giving them food that made them sick. We were giving them water that gave them kidney stones. We weren't supplying them with medical attention. They were dying from lack of heart medication that they'd been on for 20 years. You never heard about this, ever, because of the f***ing photographs. The Department of Defense focused all of the attention upon those atrocious acts committed by war criminals, my brother and sister military policemen. And then everything else that happened at that prison, to the other 95% of those prisoners, went unreported in the media. 